Welcome everyone. I'm sorry I can't be with you over the next few hours, but the program looks to be very exciting and I hope you have a fantastic day together sharing and learning about learning analytics. What I thought I might do in this brief presentation is give you an overview of how the Open University is approaching analytics and how that links to your theme about research and practice before I hand over to Bart who will give you a fuller explanation of how the Open University goes about learning analytics. We have a strategic approach at the Open University and we're developing our capabilities in three areas. One of those areas sits around data and how data is organised at the university and particularly getting a truthful set of data in one place. We're very involved in how we design and prototype and pipeline in a sense, incubate you might say, the ways in which we analyse our data and interpret results and I'm going to talk a little bit in a moment about one of those initiatives. And then finally, the other aspect of the wheel is the processes that impact on student success. And we use a very, a model that's a little bit like Schoen's um, in action model, where we talk about interventions that are for action, in action, and we've added on action. So one example I've got here is all focused on how we embed student support. And it works through our student support teams who have a, a fantastic dashboard that gives them information about the students who are in the various tutor groups across the UK. And we rely on the reporting that you can see here in front of you to develop interventions that will help support our students in their journey. So a very typical intervention here could be that we observe that the students do not hand in an assignment, for example. And so we're able to send them a message to say, please consider your assignment and should you be handing it in now. So we gently prompt the student. Another way in which we embed learning analytics is through the quality assurance and quality enhancement processes at the university. And typically, and you'll probably recognise some of these things from your university as well. So through the annual quality review processes, we're looking at how students progress, we're looking at you know, what's happening within the programs themselves in terms of how students um, grade distribution is, we're looking at qualification completion, a whole range of different factors which help inform what things should enhance the quality learning experience of our students. And finally another example that we're very proud of are the principles that we've developed for the ethical use of student data for learning analytics. And I do hope you'll go to the website link that I've got here or even to one of the presentations in the next few hours which will talk about how we've undergone the process of developing an ethical policy for how we use student data. This of course is informing lots of other policies around the UK and, and the world more generally, so feel free to use this because we've released this under Creative Commons. A real cornerstone to the Open University's program around learning analytics is how we've gone about identifying at-risk students. So within the program we spent a lot of time very early on understanding just what the factors were that described our at-risk students. Now for every university or every context, these factors are going to be slightly different. And it's very important that you look at your own data sets and mine that for the information that it has for you. So what I've given you here are just five areas which have a number of factors buried within them that are pertinent to the Open University. So for us, we need to look at demographic. We also have discovered that previous motivation and study patterns is very important. So if a student has studied with us before or has done prior study, they're more likely to be successful. Same with student progress in their previous OU study. Obviously, the number of modules that a student take actually affects their progression and what qualification within that module as well. So there are more than 30 factors that underpin this that we know create the picture for the Open University of what a successful student looks like here. So I hope you're getting a sense of how the Open University is approaching learning analytics. It probably feels a little bit disjointed because I haven't gone through the whole picture, but I'm sure Bart's going to fill you in on that. So we might ask, well, what's that got to do with the theme, research and practice? So I want to take you back to an earlier slide where I showed you the capability of the organisation and the three areas that are key to the learning analytics program. The two main areas which inform research and practice 
and demonstrate that link very clearly are in the analysis and creation of insight area and the processes that impact student success. In particular, in the analysis and creation of insight area, we're very proud of a tool that we've developed called OU Analyze. And what it does is identify the behavioural footprints of students' journeys through their learning. So we can basically tell whether the student is going to pass or they're going to fail at key points within the module they're studying. Later on in the program, you're going to hear more about OU Analyze, so you'll be able to ask more questions about it. But this next slide gives you a view of how messy those journeys can actually be and how varied they are. Now, all of the dots that you can see on the screen there, and I don't expect you to be able to see them in great detail, all represent aspects of the learning journey. Their learning activities, their learning interactions, their points within the journey, within the learning design that we deem as important. And we can actually see which parts of that students touch. And some parts of that journey have proved to be more successful for some students than other. So we're able to use OU Analyze to predict whether or not students are going to pass or fail, but we use that information directly into practice. And what we've done is identified a series of modules which we can work specifically with module teams on to say, hey, we've noticed in this spot here, in this learning activity, that if students don't do this, they're more likely to fail. However, many students aren't doing that activity. So what could we do to encourage them to do that? And that's just one example of the kind of um, intervention that we can make and how the research and praxis nexus works together. Another example that's really key to how we work with the module teams, when we're talking about the sorts of issues that are arising, perhaps out of the predictive modelling, is learning design. And there's some very important work that's been going on in the university to help us understand how the learning design actually impacts on the success of our students. So what you have up here in front of you is something that I know Bart's going to talk about with you because it's based on his research. And it's absolutely extraordinary what he's discovered here. So taking over 40 of Open University modules, he's done an analysis with his team on what the learning design is made up of, whether it's a constructivist approach, an assessment learning design approach, etc. And what he's been able to see here is that not necessarily that student satisfaction and student retention are actually aligned together. And in fact, things that students might like, that they're very satisfied with their learning, don't necessarily mean that they're going to be successful. Now, what does that tell us about how we should design the learning experience? Well, this is exactly the moment where we can say how the research that we've done about the learning design and what makes a student successful can be implemented directly into the learning design and we can input that into when we're designing new modules or when we're in flight when modules are actually in progress. So I'm not going to say any more about that because Bart's going to lead off with that in a moment. But it's a very good example that demonstrates here at the Open University how we're combining research and then directly putting it into practice. And finally, I want to now jump quickly to FutureLearn and talk to you a little bit about the analytics that they use and how those analytics inform the design of the platform and also the learner experience. Well, the analytics at FutureLearn sit around these six areas. We use data visualisations which foster and celebrate the learner's progress. We're using real-time statistics to enable us to effectively deliver the courses so we can identify very quickly if there's a problem in a learning activity or a step or engagement with the users. We use a lot of data and the FutureLearn group has a research group that work together to analyse that data across all the partners so that we can develop insights for future learning designs. We also have platform analytics, which you might expect, which inform the product development itself and we also use post hoc analysis with course evaluations which all inform best practice. And every course that's run on the FutureLearn platform has an end of survey course which is fed back into the design of the next round of MOOCs. And obviously we use Learner Insights as well which helps support the university admissions. So it's a very sophisticated approach sitting behind that platform in order to inform not only the platform but as I said the learner experience too. So this has been the briefest of briefest introductions. It's a welcome. Again, I'd like to welcome you to the Open University. I hope you enjoy the day. You've got lots of people to talk to. There's lots of things to share with each other. 
maybe you've got a flavour from me about what we're doing at the Open University and the overall institutional strategic approach that we take and how research and practice is actually at the heart of what we're doing in learning analytics. We're a very data-led organisation and you might get that feeling from us, which means that almost everything we do comes from that nexus between those two areas. I hope that's the same for you. That's probably all I can offer at this point. I will welcome Bart to the stage or maybe someone else is going to introduce him. Everyone, once more, have a great day.